Next we have the Protestant churches. The Protestant movement was born in the mid-1500s with what we call the Protestant Reformation, which was started by a man named Martin Luther. Martin Luther uh, was a Catholic priest or bishop who saw that there was a lot of problems with Catholicism. He had an issue with corruption, with the fact that you could basically buy your way out of hell. And he posted something called the 95 Theses. It was a, there was a door where a lot of people would put notices and other things like that. And he posted this um, document with all of the lists of his issues with the Catholic Church. And out of that experience was born what we call the Protestant Reformation. Now Martin Luther is going to come up again uh, later on in our talk, but he was the father of the Protestant Reformation. And then the Protestant churches kind of split into two groups. One group is called what we call mainstream, and the other group is called evangelical. The mainstream Christians are those that are actually tend to be quite left-wing, quite liberal. They don't necessarily take the Bible literally. They still consider themselves Christians. They still believe in Jesus. Many of them still believe that you have to believe in him in order to have a relationship with God. But they also tend to be much more relaxed about, you know, whatever's what, what's for you is for you, and what's for me is for me. And they tend also not to care too much about Israel. Because they don't take the Bible word for word, Issues having to do with Israel and the Bible are not that big of an issue for them. These are the Christian groups also, by the way, that have been in the forefront of divestment from Israel and different things like that. And because of that, they also are not so interested in evangelizing the Jewish people. For the most part, when we talk about missionaries, what we're talking about is the evangelical Protestant Christians. These are people who tend to be what we call right-wing, much more conservative politically. They take the Bible literally, word for word. They believe that it is the infallible, inerrant word of God. And so when the Bible says... I will bless those that bless Israel and I will curse those that curse Israel. They take that upon themselves as a mandate. But also when they read the words of Jesus, which we're going to look at in a minute, that tell them that they need to be out there converting people, they take that just as literally. And so I've had somebody say to me, well, I know somebody who's an evangelical Christian who doesn't believe in, in proselytizing. Well, what's a synonym for proselytizing? That's evangelizing. And you can't be an evangel evangelical if you don't believe in evangelizing because that's what the word means. It means believing in spreading the good news. Okay, the good news being the story of Jesus, which we will look at in a minute. So the evangelical Christians, because they're so dedicated to their Bible and to what they believe, they are also extremely dedicated to converting the Jews, but they are also our best friends because they take seriously the fact that their Bible says that the Jews are the chosen people of God, that we are beloved by God, and that they are to bless us. So it's this double-edged sword kind of concept that while they are our best friends, they are also in many ways our worst enemies. Okay, so why do Christians want to convert people at all? Never mind Jewish people, but anybody. A lot of Jewish people think that it's to put another notch in their belt because, you know, they got to get all of these souls, right? And the truth is that they don't. They don't try to convert people because they're somehow winning something for themselves. It turns out that Christian theology is that once they've accepted Jesus as their Savior, once they believe in Jesus, put their faith in him, their place in heaven is assured. So converting people has absolutely nothing to do with trying to earn a place in heaven or earn brownie points. And in fact, it comes from a very good place, which we'll see in a minute, a place of love and concern. In the Christian Bible, there are four books. Um, there's more than four books, but the first four books are called the Gospels. And those are the four books that tell the story of Jesus' life and birth and life and ministry and death. Okay? That's the story. And there are four books. There are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is from John, which is the fourth Gospel, from verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 16. And what it says is that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, which we'll have to unpack that, so whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. The idea is, 
that in order, and we'll get into this a little bit more, but that we can't have a relationship with God, so God provided an intermediary, and through him, we can have a relationship with God. The problem is that the, the converse is also true. Without believing in Jesus, we cannot have a relationship with God whatsoever. That is the Christian belief. In Christianity, there are only two types of people. Either you are lost or you are saved. Either you don't believe in Jesus or you do. And if you don't believe in him, you're going to burn in hell fires forever. And if you do believe in him, then you go straight to heaven. That's it. Very, very black and white. John chapter 14 verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Again, reinforcing this idea that you can't even have a relationship with God. Somebody to say, I love God and I'm serving God and I'm trying, doesn't hold any water. They're like, doesn't matter. You don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. There's only one way. But again, as I said, they are coming from a very good place as far as their desire to try to convert people. Imagine if you had the cure for cancer. Imagine that you knew exactly you know, the medicine or whatever the routine was to cure people of cancer and you knew that it worked. You would want to share it with everybody you know, right? Especially those that have cancer, but you would want to share it with everyone. And that's where Christians are coming from because they believe that we have a cancer called sin. And this sin is killing us. It's not necessarily killing us in the physical, but it's killing us in the spiritual. I mean, there's a lot of parallels here, but you need to listen for those subtle differences between the Jewish understanding and the Christian understanding. Anyhow, they feel that they, it's their duty and it's their goal to share this cure with everyone. I mean, which one of us wouldn't do that? If you knew that you had the cure for cancer... You wouldn't hold it back. You'd share it with everybody you know, right? Because you never know whose life this might save. Because you're essentially a good person, as are most Christians. At least nowadays, modern Christians are good people who just care about others and they just want to save them. So anyway, so they share with everyone. It says in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 19, And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So here, Jesus is telling his disciples to go into all the world and to convert everybody that they can find. Now it's interesting to note that Matthew 28 is actually after It's at the end of his life. It's at the end of his ministry. And up until that point, he primarily sent his disciples to the Jewish people, which we'll see over the course of this class. But at the end, he finally said, that's it. Just go into everybody. I'm done with the Jewish people. Now we're going to minister to everybody, and you need to convert them all. This is called the Great Commission, and this was his mandate to his disciples to try to convert everyone. And Christians today believe that this is not just incumbent on his 12 disciples back when Jesus was alive, but on everybody who follows him nowadays. Here's another verse, Mark 16, verse 15. Again, these are all from the New Testament, and they are in the source sheets, so you don't have to necessarily copy down the whole verse. If you just want to make copy down the reference, you'll be getting a copy of the verses. It says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. So we can see that Christians regard this as a mandate, that every follower of Jesus has an obligation to tell everyone in the world about Jesus. And for Protestants, this includes non-Protestants. Many of them believe it's important to evangelize the Catholics that are there because they believe that they're probably lost and going to hell too. Uh, But anyway, so nobody is um, off limits in the case of this. So Christians also see the people of the world kind of like being fish in an ocean. Now, I have a video, which I'm not going to show you, but I usually show, especially when I'm talking to teens. It's a video about a program called FISH, where um, it's a curriculum, a four-week curriculum that high schoolers can use in the public schools. You know, in public schools, kids are allowed to have these... um, 
clubs after school, right? And you can have a religious club as long as it's not started or initiated by a teacher. It has to be initiated by students, but then they can get a teacher to sponsor. And so somebody created this curriculum that they can use Somebody created this curriculum that they can use, which repeats every four weeks, and it's called FISH. And in this advertisement, basically to encourage teenagers to use this program, they talk about how we're all like fish. We're all lost in a sea, and we're just waiting to be hooked and to be caught and to be brought into their church. That's how they see people. They see us as fish waiting to be caught. All right. So, what about the Jewish people? We've all heard of Jews for Jesus. But Jews for Jesus is an organization. It's not a movement. We use it as a movement. We use it as a term to describe Jewish people who believe in him. But Jews for Jesus is actually an incorporated organization that has existed since the 1970s. And their mission, of course, is to convert Jews. But they're only one of over a thousand such missionary organizations in North America who target specifically target Jews for conversion to Christianity. Now there are tons of other organizations also and there are tons of independent missionaries who certainly wouldn't turn away a Jew if they if they came across one. But Jews for Jesus is only one of a thousand that specifically target Jews for conversion. So why? Well, like I said, evangelical Christians take their Bible very seriously, right? It's a book which focuses on Jewish people. Jesus was a Jew. The entire environment of the New Testament, his followers were all Jews, at least his first followers. And Jesus told his followers that he came for the Jews and that they should go to the Jewish people. In the book of Romans, which is one of the later books in the New Testament written by Paul, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Remember, that's the message about Jesus. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay, Greek meaning Gentile. And the idea here is that Jesus came first to the Jewish people. Jesus was from the Jewish people. And so in addition to owing a debt of gratitude to the Jewish people, so we should go to them with the gospel first, that his, since Jesus had commanded everybody to go to the Jews first, that's who they should go to first. Now, going back to Matthew, which is the story of Jesus' life, it says these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we'll see in a minute another reason why it's very important to them. But because this is such an important thing that is brought out in the New Testament over and over again, this focus on witnessing and, and converting Christians... They believe that the end justifies the means. There is absolutely nothing short of absolute outright lying, and you can kind of bend what that means, right? I mean, you know, what's a lie, right? Um, it's kind of like this. Let's say you were walking by a burning building, and you saw someone inside the building, and they needed to be brought out. They needed to be rescued. Many of us would put our lives on the line in order to save that person. But how many of us, let's say, fantasize with me for a minute, let's say you were wearing an asbestos suit or something like that and you knew that you could go into the building and you would not be injured by going into this fire because you had this protective suit. How many of us would walk by the building with the person inside and leave them there? None of us would, right? We would all go in and rescue the person because we care about people. Now let's say you got into the building and you go to rescue the person and they start banging you on the chest saying, leave me alone, I'm happy here, I'm not interested, I don't want to leave. How many of us would just leave that person there and walk out of the building? Not very many. Most of us would carry that person out of the building, kicking and screaming, saving their bodies, and worrying about why they had a death wish afterwards, right? We'd worry about getting them to the psychologist after we saved them. 
That's the way that Christians see us. As Jewish people, we don't realize that we need saving. We're in a burning building and we think it's perfectly fine and we're going to be destroyed. And it's their duty to bring us out of that burning building no matter what means they need to use in order to get us there. And oftentimes, you know, once they can convince us to come into a church or a Messianic congregation especially, a Hebrew Christian congregation, then there are other things that are in place that are enough to keep us there. And that's the goal, just to get us there.